Wrestling 2018 is sponsored by Wisconsin Hospital Association, Wisconsin Counties Association, Wisconsin Realtors Association, Marshfield Clinic Health System, AARP Wisconsin, and Campaign 2018 partner Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. Republican Representative John Nygren of Marinette is seeking re-election in the 89th Assembly District. Representative, thanks for talking to Wisconsin Eye. It's good to be with you, Steve. As a co-chair of Joint Finance, where do I begin on some of these major <laughs> issues? I have an idea. How can we go forward and break the impasse on transportation, highway funding, Representative? Well, I mean, it's something that even in, when we're not in session, it's something that's of interest to me. I actually just had a conference call yesterday with somebody who brought up uh, a concept we hadn't considered yet that uh, I, I'm exploring. Um, kind of a. You want to make news and talk about it? No, oh, uh, well. not, not quite yet. But I, I, I think, had to ask. Yeah, I okay. think I think that's the uh, that's where you need to, do, to to go to be able to lead on an issue is keep looking for new avenues. Uh, where not only my colleagues in the legislature will accept, the governor will accept, uh, but the, uh, the voters as well. Well, what's your starting point? I mean, you're going back to Representative Coinga's plan. Uh, are you, again, talking about a gas tax increase? Is tolling still seriously be considered? So um, I think my, my general position has always been you know, we should consider it all. Um, Representative Coinga's plan, I was supportive of that. I think that was a... Uh, you realizing the political realities we're in, where the governor's position not wanting to raise taxes and, and without some type of trade-off, I get that 100%. I'm a conservative Republican. I've never voted for a tax increase in, in 12 years. Um, you know, so I, I get that uh, that principled stand. Yet, you know, we have to find a pathway to be able to solve this problem. Uh, you know, transportation is not only important for safety, but it's also imp important for our economy. When we've done, we've taken so many important steps to improve our economy in, in Wisconsin. You know, the growth of our transportation system has to be on the table. You've had a little bit to think about tolling. Is it a serious starter? It is for me, is um, it? and I know it is for, for Speaker Voss and, and for others, and I, uh, the Majority Leader Fitzgerald has been talking more and more about it as well. And uh, you know, I, I do think there, as I said, there's some uh, potentially creative ways that tolling would be involved in those creative ways uh, to be able to address that problem um, of revenue um, that I, I think should be, should be definitely considered. You know, I mean, there's, what's the old saying with the tax? The only good tax is the tax somebody else pays. You know, my constituents in Northeast Wisconsin um, may not be huge fans of it because they, they deal with Illinois, but I, I do think that the, the polls I've seen, it's, it's one of the ones that would be broadly accepted. Um, it's, you, it's a true user fee. If you don't uh, use the system, you're not going to pay. Well, just a quick follow-up. What about the investment in setting up the, the well, I, those I, numbers are pretty large too, aren't they, Jim? They, they are, but not as large as they would have been. I mean, I think okay. the perception of people is that you have to create all these toll booths and all those type of things. Over the road tolling is uh, definitely something that's uh, less expensive and uh, could be implemented much quickly than the tr traditional tolling systems. Okay, new subject. The, um, the vote for tax benefits, tax breaks for Foxconn and then the um, Kimberly Clark wanting the same uh, tax package. W w where do you go forward in saying yes and no to helping private companies, Representative? Well, where I go um, is, you know, you know if, the, if you were uh, somebody who was uh, just a observer of what's been happening in Wisconsin, but happening in the United States over the last, let's say, just 40 years. Gradu I graduated in high school in 1982. Um, I believe the last television was manufactured in the United States it, right about that same time. Now, not that Foxconn is just televisions, they're much more than just televisions, but if I would say to you that we're able to give uh, tax incentives based, based on their uh, investment in Wisconsin, based on their payroll taxes in Wisconsin, to bring a $10 billion investment and, thir and 13,000 jobs, I think most people would say, hey, that, that's a win to bring that technology to, the, to uh, Wisconsin. A company that's already here, uh, we provide incentives for, for growth and for new jobs all the time. Uh, we've done it for Marriott Marine, we've done it for, uh, we're doing it right now here in the Green Bay area uh, for um, uh, uh, Green Bay Packaging, uh, the first uh, uh, paper mill built in Wisconsin, I think uh, almost 80 years. 
Um, so there are a lot of situations where we do that. Um, doing it in a situation where it's just about a company threatening to leave, I, I'm not. I personally am not real comfortable with that, but I understand uh, the, uh, the 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 concern of trying to keep those jobs here in our state. Another big issue in the budget, uh, if you're reelected, re and again, Joint Finance Chair is the Department of Corrections. Green Bay Wapan prisons built in the 1800s. Some Democrats have argued we can cut the prison population in half over a number of years. Do we need, an, are, are, are you going to have to vote for a new state prison in the next session if you're back? Um, I actually voted. There was a proposal that came out of the Senate, uh, it was championed by uh, Representative San, San Filippo in, in the Assembly, dealing with revocations of uh, you know, people on parole. Mm -hmm. um, and I, my position on it, as I, sh I shared with the Speaker, if we're going to revoke people who are on parole based on a new charge, uh, there, this is more than just you know uh, changing our policies. This is we need to look at our complete system. Our complete system includes uh, you know, more uh, assistant district attorneys throughout the state. I had a bill along with Representative Bourne that would have uh, given 54, I believe it was, throughout the state. Um, but also, yes, building a prison uh, because our, I think we're at 127 percent of capacity. capacity. You mentioned Wapan and Green Bay being built, I think, right around statehood. Uh, they're not very efficient. Uh, I, but for me, the long-term goal would just not be more capacity. The long-term goal would be, you know, looking to, you know, I, I'm in agreement that we can reduce uh, the population over time. I do believe that, um, you know, the uh, things such as treatment and diversion programs have proven to be successful. Simply saying we're going to reduce, uh, we're going to reduce to by half. I think it's a little too aggressive and, and would put us in a situation where people who committed serious crimes would be released. You shepherded a budget that included a, a pretty significant increase in state aid to K-12 schools. The, the question now is how big of an increase in the next state budget now that uh, it seems to me both Mr. Evers and Mr. and Governor Walker are arguing for two-thirds. What would be the additional cost of going to two-thirds? Two I don't have the numbers off the top of my head. I mean, I saw Tony Evers' proposal at 1.4 billion, but he also that was all pro that, that was all programs, including 600 million more for special ed. Excuse right. me for interrupting. Right, but uh, 1.4 billion dollars, um, you know, for for education. But at the same time, he talks about repealing Act 10. I know that one that, uh, for the state uh, expenses because I've, I've looked into it just recently based on his his uh, statements. It's about $500 million uh, in, in additional costs to the state. That doesn't take into consideration the cost um, to uh, the locals, uh, like towns, villages, uh, mostly cities, I, I think, that would have those labor costs. Um, that makes it pretty tough to be able to balance a budget. So uh, my job is to be able to take the budget that the governor gives us and make decisions based on the realities that we're, uh, we're in at that point in time. Uh, if the economy continues to grow at 4%, which is kind of where we're at right now, uh, that, that's fine. I think we can pr uh, provide an additional uh, you know, dollars for ed K-12 education. But that 1.4 on top of the 500 million uh, cost for re uh, repealing Act 10, that's too big, that's too far, uh, we, can't get, we can't go there. Choice and vouchers have expanded uh, now statewide. Do you support further expansion? Well, I think where Excuse we're at me. right now, I'm, I'm comfortable with where we're at right now that, you know, basically we have a statewide program. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, we've seen, we've seen growth in it just naturally, and I, I'm comfortable with where it's at. Uh, that, that's something that's completely uh, revisited uh, you know, pretty much every single budget cycle. The last debate uh, was about, uh, you know, the, the income levels that, uh, that uh, were, would be allowed for people with, um, you know, with, with, with vouchers. So... Um, I, I think for me, it's about uh, parental, uh, parental choice, meaning me or you as a parent making that decision what's best for our child, uh, not about government placing those limits. Uh, I am actually comfortable in the long run doing something along the lines of basically just letting the dollars follow the child. Um, continue the UW system tuition freeze for a seventh and eighth year, Representative? Uh, you know, I'm a parent of a child in uh, in the system right now, so I mean it's been good. It's been good for us and I think I, uh, as a family because we know what our costs are. Um, but I also um, think it's been good because you I mean with that's all this conversation about student debt, 
you know, I'm not sure that there's any, even any program that could be could compete with the fact that I believe the average is about six thousand dollars in savings uh, to the average student over the last uh, you know four years um, because of that uh, tuition freeze. Um, it, to me, it's all about the priorities of the budget and the ability to, to be able to afford those uh, those uh, decisions. Uh, I do think there's going to come a day, I said at last budget, there's going to come a day where that's not uh, financially feasible anymore. Uh, we've been able to make it. And actually, I believe the, the UW's uh, tuition account has actually grown over the last couple of years. And I think that's mostly attributable to uh, we're, we're paying more or charging more for outstate students and for higher uh, degrees. Uh, so we've been able to do it that way. I'm not sure that we're always we're always going to be able to do it that way. You've been the leader, the point person on the Hope Agenda, fighting uh, addiction and abuse of uh, methamphetamine, opioids, heroin. Next steps in the next session, John. Well, um, we've uh, we've come a long way. Um, you know, the the biggest challenge is continued um, uh, expansion of treatment. Uh, making sure that we have more access, whether that, and people think of that as facilities. Uh, it's not always facilities. Oftentimes it's just doctors uh, being able to uh, have a willingness to take uh, people in it with addictions uh, for, for treatment. Uh, we're trying to set up a system. We're working on the hub and spoke right now. There's a commission studying how that would be implemented. The idea behind the hub and spoke in Wisconsin would probably look like a hospital would be the the hub, take uh, the person in who's suffering with an addiction, uh, stabilize them, and then release them to the spoke, which would be uh, most likely a primary care doctor who could continue to manage uh, not only, in most cases, drug-assisted uh, treatment, but also uh, counseling. So that is kind of the next big step that we're hoping to implement. We've already taken the initial steps. It's, it's, it's where we're going uh, in, over the next two years. Part of this debate, are there proposals to legalize both recreational and medical marijuana? Where are you on that? Uh, you know, I live in uh, in Marinette. I'm right on the front lines of that because Michigan has a referendum right now. It will be on the ballot in November on recreational marijuana. Um, you know, I, I am somewhat sympathetic on um, medicinal use uh, because of, you know, the obvious reasons, but I think that's one of the reasons why we passed the CBD oil. We look for other avenues there. Um, I am not a fan of continued um, availability of, mar of marijuana. Um, I do believe it's a gateway drug and, and oftentimes I think the people that are making the decisions, people my age, might with, maybe with a few gray, gray hairs, might have been exposed to marijuana back in the day and the marijuana then was different than it is today. I'm hearing up to seven times stronger so I don't, belie I don't believe it's a, a, a good decision for us to uh, go down that road. Local governments have been living with levy limits for 14 years to control property taxes. You've heard concerns from local leaders that it hurts their ability to provide local services. Continue with levy limits, dial them back, well, get rid of them. This is something that's been accepted by, I mean, both Republican and Democratic administrations over the years because it, it there, things were out of control. I think this is similar to um, the situation uh, with with schools where we, we've got the ability to go over the levy if, uh, you know, through referendum where it gives the voice to the the local taxpayer and I, I, I'm a, I would continue to support that 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 concept um, of giving that local taxpayer the voice um, you know to be able to decide whether the taxes should be raised in their communities or not all the polls show that health care is a huge issue mm -hmm. let me ask a, a couple questions on that how do we protect and expand health care in rural Wisconsin well I'm leaving here and going to talk about that very same issue. One of the, one of the ways is, is uh, by getting more doctors practicing in, in rural Wisconsin. And we've, done a, we've taken a number of steps towards that over the last couple budgets um, by um, investing in rural health care, whether it be uh, medical school in Wausau through the Medical College of Wisconsin or the one here in Green Bay with, resident, with uh, investments in residencies in rural Wisconsin. The studies have shown that once um, you know, a doctor actually practices in, in rural Wisconsin, they're more likely to stay in rural Wisconsin, so that's one way. Uh, but it, con it continues to be to even, even more significant than just that, access to uh, health uh, insurance. Um, you know, Obamacare has not been uh, what it was promised to be at the federal level. You know, keep your doctor, that's, that we know that's not the case. We know that it was supposed to control costs. We know that's not the case. Uh, for me, uh, this reinsurance plan that we implemented in Wisconsin identifies the, that fact al alone to be as a way to try and help our, our citizens um, reduce those costs. But, you know, we're, we're, it's not a, obviously a silver bullet where there's more work that needs to be done. I want to ask about reinsurance. Is that 
uh, is that going to help just for calendar 2019 or beyond that? The, I the idea with that is this is ongoing. Ongoing. Yes. 200 million for for the foreseeable future. Well, it's a it's a, an investment. I don't was it 200 million total? That it maybe had been 200 million total, but that was not more, that was not state money. That no, was a combination that's of federal and state money. Right. Um, majority of that is federal money. Um, the uh, so long long term. I mean, people have been critical of not taking the. Uh, the the Medicaid expansion. expansion. We are taking fed, um, federal money in by doing this, but we're just passing it along in a different way. And to me, you know, people buying insurance on the exchange, even though it is through Obamacare, whether I'm a fan of that or not, is a better choice than putting them uh, putting them in Medicaid, where we get pennies on the dollar for reimbursements. The private sector actually has much better uh, reimbursement rates for for doctors, hospitals, and, and economically has a much better opportunity for success. So, but state government then has a role in recruiting and retaining doctors and nurses and other medical professionals? Or? I, I don't believe we have a role in that, but we have the ability to provide incentives uh, and investments like we have for, uh, for the Medical College of Wisconsin to be able to help them um, educate in more rural areas. The pilot program with state government and Delta Dental that offers, that subsidizes dental Seal care. Smile, I believe. Yes. Is that a, do you consider that a priority in the next MA budget? Um, I am somebody. I am somebody that believes that we are not doing a good enough job with uh, dental Medicaid. Um, I kind of uh, have expressed my opinion to my, my friends at the Dental Association. I believe we're we're near the bottom in dental access. Uh, that needs to be uh, something that we fix. Um, my my the way I look at my job after 12 years in the legislature, I'm sticking around to solve problems. Um, we, in this last session, we addressed the you know, the low revenue spending problem that had been around for 25 years. That's an initiative I got done initially through the budget, got vetoed, but we were able to negotiate a deal later and get it done. Yep. Um, those big problems like dental access, dental uh, uh, care for Medicaid patients is something that I would like to see us fix. AARP estimates that 578,000 Wisconsin residents are caregivers for family members or neighbors, people they love. Would you support laws or regulations that call for hospitals to recognize family caregivers when their loved ones are hospitalized? Is this the CARE Act? If it's the CARE, if it's what I'm, I mean, you're not being, probably not specific enough for me to understand the exact details, but there, if it's the AARP, um, there was a, a proposal to actually allow for uh, family members to be the caregivers, and I actually I believe there's a tax credit affiliated with that as well. I'm actually a co-sponsor uh, co of that initiative, if that's what you're, the question you're asking. I, I think that's a pretty proximate answer. Um, yeah. Last uh, question, differences with your opponent on November 6th? Uh, you know, I mean, he's a veteran. I respect his commitment to our, our nation. Uh, I think he's served 20 years in the Navy, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I'm a lifelong resident of the Marinette area. He's fairly new, I think less than a year, maybe a little bit more to the Marinette area. His biggest issue is with the, the mine proposal on the, on the Michigan side. Uh, the federal government gave uh, Michigan the ability to permit that, uh, I believe back in the early 80s. Wisconsin doesn't have a lot of say other than us uh, telling Michigan they have to meet our water quality standards because the mine is on the Menominee River. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that's his biggest concern. He, he'll talk about uh, the mine uh, bill that we passed in Wisconsin. The mine bill we passed in Wisconsin gave local units of government the ability to uh, pass ordinances uh, dealing with mining. If that was the case, the mine in Michigan probably wouldn't be happening because the local units of government would be saying no. Hmm. So uh, to me, that's probably the biggest uh, difference between, uh, uh, between us is that one, one issue alone. Republican Representative John Nygren of Marinette is seeking re-election in the 89th Assembly District. John, thanks for talking to Wisconsin. It's always good to be with you. Thank you. Campaign 2018 is sponsored by Wisconsin Hospital Association, Wisconsin Counties Association, Wisconsin Realtors Association, Marshfield Clinic Health System, AARP Wisconsin and Campaign 2018 partner Milwaukee Journal Sentinel.